In this video, we're going to learn how to write empirical formulas, just like this, for all of these molecular formulas. Here's our first example, C8H18, which represents a compound that has 8 carbons and 18 hydrogens. To write the empirical formula, we do kind of the same thing that we do when we have a fraction, and we want to get it into its simplest or most reduced form. We look at both of these numbers, 8 and 18, and we ask, what is the biggest number that we can divide both of these by to get them as reduced as possible? Okay, so in this case, we can divide both 8 and 18 by 2. They're both divisible by 2. And dividing both of these by 2 is exactly what we'll do to get the empirical formula. It will look like this. We'll have C and then 8 divided by 2 is going to give us 4, and we have H18 divided by 2 gives us 9. Okay, so now we got 4 and we got 9. And check it out. We can't divide both of these by the same number anymore, okay? That's how we know that this is in its simplest or most reduced form, and it's how we know that we now have the empirical formula, okay? Let's look at a couple more. C8H6O4. As before, we want to ask what's the biggest number that we can divide all of these by to get this as reduced as possible, okay? We can divide all of these numbers here by 2, just as we did up here. And so the empirical formula is going to look like C8 divided by 2, 4, H6 divided by 2, 3, and O4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, how about with this one? C3 and 12. What can we divide everything by here to reduce it down? Okay, both 3 and 12 are divisible by 3. So we'll divide these by 3 and we'll get C. 3 divided by 3 is 1. But remember when we're writing chemical formulas and we have a 1, we just don't write anything. So it's just going to be C and then it's going to be N, 12 divided by 3 is going to give us 4. So this is the empirical formula. Okay, P2S3. What can we divide both of these numbers by to get this as reduced as possible? Nothing. There is nothing that we can divide both of these numbers by, right? They're not divisible by the same numbers. So because of that, P2S3 is as reduced as it can get. So that means that the empirical formula in this case is exactly the same as this molecular formula. And, and sometimes that happens. Often you'll have molecular formulas that can't be reduced down anymore and their empirical formulas are exactly the same. So don't freak out if you get a formula like this you just can't reduce. It's fine. The empirical formula is just the same as a molecular formula. Okay? How about H2O2? Well, in this case we can divide both of these by 2. So our empirical formula will look like H2 divided by 2, which gives us 1, but we don't write anything after it if we have a 1, so it's just going to be H. And then we have O2 divided by 2, which also gives us 1. We don't write anything after it, so just HO is going to be the empirical formula for H2O2. Okay, now if you feel you've really gotten the hang of this, you still might want to watch me do a couple more because I'm going to talk about a few examples that sometimes trip people up. It can be a little bit tricky. S8. In this formula, we just have one type of element, sulfur, but we still go through the same process to write the empirical formula, okay? Can we divide this number by something that will reduce it even more? Yeah, 8 is divisible by 8. So our empirical formula is just going to be S8 divided by 8, which is 1. So the empirical formula for S8 is just going to be S, okay? How about C6H6, okay? In this case, both of these are divisible by 6. So the empirical formula will be C, 6 divided by 6, 1, so we put nothing after it. And then H, 6 divided by 6, which is also 1. So we don't put anything after that. So it's just going to be CH is the empirical formula for this. Now one thing that I just want to point out here is that oftentimes many compounds can have the same empirical formula. All right. C6H6 has this empirical formula, but all of these other molecular formulas, as well as many others, 
have the same empirical formula right here. The empirical formula for all of these is CH. So oftentimes you'll see a bunch of molecular formulas that have the same empirical formula. So just, just keep that in mind. Okay, two more. C12, H10O, and there's nothing after it, so it's an O1, okay? What can we divide all of these by to simplify it more? There is nothing. Just as we saw before, when you can't further simplify a molecular formula, the empirical formula is just the exact same as a molecular one. So that's all we do, okay? Here's a last one. B3, N3, H6. What can, we, what can we divide everything by? We can divide everything by three. So we're gonna get B, three divided by three is one, we don't put anything. N, three divided by three is one, so we don't put anything. And H, six divided by three is two. So that's how we can take molecular formulas and write empirical formulas for them.